Alright, so how you guys doing? We're going over the Cup Series at Phoenix. Sorry that this is coming out a bit late. I had to run around and do stuff in town uh, a couple days. So I'm just getting to this now. Recording this early Thursday morning. Uh, when we're looking at the Cup Series, there's a couple things I want to talk about. So one is personally, for me, I've had success in trucks and Xfinity for, for whatever reason. I've, I've just haven't had the successes in the Cup Series that I've been wanting. When I look back at how I've been playing, I mean, I think I played the optimal or came close to it in the spring race of Martinsville last year or was it the year before whenever Byron won it um but past that I really haven't had a lot of good sweats in in with the short tracks like personally I hate that like Bristol is uh, at the end of the year the track that a lot of like uh big tournament champions uh or like the big like a lot of big tournaments happen a lot of qualifiers happen for Bristol because I'm like dude I suck at predicting uh, Bristol and so for me I'm kind of just going to approach the cup series at uh, short tracks completely different um, this year and with that it's kind of going to be what this video is about of what I'm personally going to do entering this weekend that I maybe necessarily haven't done before or looking at certain aspects of things that I haven't done before and the first thing I want to talk about is when we look at these races specifically now this is based on my um, ranking again top five percentage top ten um Laps led, fastest lap, pit road, and all that. This is how the drivers rank of how fast they were. It's not necessarily driver rank. It's not necessarily where they finished. It's just where they were in terms of like actual speed and stuff. And when we look at the tracks that are here, also another little pet peeve of mine, like if I hear somebody else say short flat track this week, I just might lose it. Like, okay, yeah, we're not using Bristol. What other short tracks are we using? All the short tracks are, are, are flat, boys. Come on now. Um, when I look at this race here, and I look at, the tracks and data that we can look at okay we understand that we're taking all the all the gen 6 data and just picking it up and throwing it in the trash we're taking year one of the next gen card we're just picking it up and throwing it in the trash and so really we just have this season here last season uh, rather and when we look at phoenix even in the past you know i mean we had harvick dominating and, and shit like that but when we look at phoenix specifically there's a total different dynamic between the opening race in the spring and the championship race in the fall. Typically, in the championship race, you know, people aren't necessarily racing as hard. I mean, you have Ross Chastain, all balls, no brain, you know, not caring about who's racing for the championship. But typically, you have the championship four being, like, given more leeway. People aren't racing them as, as hard and stuff. And they typically hold the top four positions, or at least four of the top six. And then the, the, the Phoenix race is a much more open. Everybody's trying stuff, you know, um, and it's just like when we're looking at Phoenix data, like that's a totally different aspect. Like that's you almost act, you almost have to act like those as like two drastically different races, or two drastically different tracks, uh, at least in my opinion. When we look at what we're doing this year, in terms of the short track package that they're making the change to, that they're trying to make it uh, race more exciting and stuff. Uh, we had a tire test back in January uh, during the off season. Uh, Larson and some other guys were running it for um, Goodyear, and so. Like NASCAR is expecting a bit of a change uh, with the short track package this see or this weekend, and when I hear that, and I hear or I, and I look back at what we had last year, I have found that I'm more susceptible susceptible to trusting the practice data, especially in situations like this where we have a 50 minute practice on Friday or tomorrow, and when it's going to be a different package than what we ran last year in the short tracks. And so when we're looking at this data here, and a lot of people want to argue that, you know, certain tracks are closer to Phoenix than others. For me, like I have all the short tracks here. For me, when I was setting up cars, when I was working on stuff, like when I look at Martinsville, for example, there's nothing we're bringing from Martinsville to even work at Phoenix. However, the most important thing in Martinsville is getting the car to rotate at low speeds in the center of the corner so you can like drive off very hard and pull away from people. Now, there's nothing in that setup that you're bringing to another track, but if your team is competent and able to get your car to rotate at Martinsville, you're typically going to have them be competent and get you to rotate at other tracks that, yeah, have a higher speed but also have no banking to lean on. When, when you're putting that much, you know, lean into the right rear and in the right side of the car you need your left rear to not just like lift off the ground i mean it's not lifting off the ground but you need the left rear to also like stay on the ground and help you drive off the corner okay and so typically when we start analyzing it from that point of view and i think that's what i'm going to focus on more is the rotation and, and lean 
that the teams are having out of the corners, specifically at um, New Hampshire, specifically at Gateway, specifically at Richmond, okay? And I think that's what I'm going to lean into more. And so we'll look at the salaries and stuff and compare them to kind of where they fall in line. The other aspect that short tracks kind of, you know, piss me off in a sense is that there's not as much consistency. Uh, sure, there's consistency throughout the year. Like, we'll see guys increase and get closer to, like, the end of the year and, and typically in the next year. But unlike how I'd look at the 1.5s, which, like, I would love that data point that I use, this one is, is a lot more all over the place. Like, when we look at, like, Larson, for example, and even not all over the place, people just kind of all over the place in, in short tracks. When we look at Larson last year entering, you know, this weekend and stuff, you know, still consistent, but... I mean, more inconsistencies compared to other races. I mean, this is a bad race in Richmond, but even when you look at here, like, yeah, sure, top nine car or top ten car in, uh, yeah, top nine car in all these races, but still, like, not an actual, like, runaway outside of the first two races to open the year. When we look at Byron, you know, kind of the same story. Runaway to open the year, kind of got beaten by, you know, uh, JGR and other cars catching up later in the year and stuff. I'm just going to go off of the... Uh, order here and we can kind of look at how, how they did in the rest of the year when we look at bell also secondly like i understand i'm not like looking at optimal lineups for for phoenix like we we understand that we're gonna need two lap leaders two to three lap leaders you know when we look at the salaries where we don't have a 4k and so you know uh, you're gonna be in the 6k and 5k range again i don't think that's necessarily what we need to go over i, I think it's more so trying to pinpoint who that's gonna be and even not having like pre um not even pre what is it um, I don't necessarily want to have biases entering this Phoenix weekend. I, I very much want to look at people just as driver A, B, C, and D and just look at how they're doing in practice and where they qualify. And then also pit stall selection. When we look at Phoenix, Phoenix is one of the most dominating tracks in terms of pit stall selection. Like we know, you know, pit stall one is important. But when you look at the way that the pit road is designed and you look at what makes a good exit in a fast team and a fast run pit lane, uh, you need to almost envision Phoenix Pit Road as its own racetrack, okay? And understand that the fastest line, especially when you're at a stagnant speed, okay? If you have if you have to pit on the actual straight back straightaway, you not only have to enter by the wall, go towards the inside wall, and then come back out and run the outside wall. You're running a greater distance than anybody who's pitting either in the corner and certainly in the exit because that's more so if you're going down pit lane and you're hugging the wall, and then you basically have a late apex in the corner, and you leave on the exit, or you leave on the bottom of pit lane. I don't know if that makes sense, but like, uh, like here, hold on. Like, when you look at why Phoenix Pit Road is so important, like, this is the actual racetrack. They have, like, some D-shape, whatever. And then you have pit road that is drastically a different distance compared to the track. And this is kind of amplify, amplify. This is kind of a... Uh, uh, a more extreme version of what some of the D ovals are, uh, uh, like the curved pit lanes, kind of like at, at Las Vegas and other tracks, Kansas specifically. Like these tracks that don't necessarily have a straight pit lane, unlike Charlotte, the ones that have like, like if you're running like a D shape oval, you know, this is the oval, and then pit lane is kind of like curved and it kind of follows the corner and stuff. This is also what adds a faster time or a slower time in, um, the like on pit road and so like the phoenix pit road this is the outside wall of the phoenix pit road you know you're basically cutting the track and then you exit way down here right and so when you're looking at pit road from like that distance okay and you understand like how it is and, and what you're doing if you're running the same speed and you have to run the outside by the wall if you're running the same speed okay like this is the like predetermined line that you have to run you have to run by the outside wall regardless of where you're at if you're pitting early down on a, on the straight back straightaway, you then have to come back out and then yet again run the entire outside length of pit road to get out of it. Okay, whereas when you're pitted on, you know, even pit box one, like pit box one is overpowered, but even all like all the pit boxes that are on the inside of the corner and that have like no obstructions and stuff, you're technically running a smaller radius. Okay, because you have to enter and then you basically just low apex the uh, the corner or you have a late apex and stuff and so you just exit pit road at the very bottom of the track and so even if you're pitting in any of these stalls you don't necessarily have to get out to the outside you just get out and then you fit out wherever and you run a shorter distance compared to the people who have like 
you know, you have a pit road, you have a pit box here, and then you have to come back out and run the entire outside lane. You see that these guys are running technically more distance, and you have a slightly longer time on pit road. Okay, and so when you see the Phoenix pit boxes um, carrying guys, you know, positions or maintaining positions, it's all it's mainly the guys in this range that are keeping those pit boxes or you know, like the very first stalls, because then you just enter on the bottom, and then, yeah, sure, you have to run the top, but, like, you're also running a shorter distance compared to everybody else who's having to run um, the rest of the track and stuff. And so when we're looking at Phoenix, that's another aspect that I really want to focus on and stuff, and I probably haven't chased that enough. Um, and so, like, that's, you know, another aspect that I want to focus on. Yet again, we don't have that until we have, you know, qualifying and stuff. Uh, as we continue to go down, we're seeing that there's quite a lot of, I mean, Harvick was very consistent. We'll see what Gregson and Priest bring. But, like, we're seeing a lot of guys kind of have up and down performances. There's not exactly one person kind of having a slam dunk play. We do see Hamlin, as I say that, we do have Hamlin, who is the only driver who actually had a top nine car in all of these races last year and consistently got a little bit better throughout the year. Yet again, uh, Phoenix 2 Championship, that's almost a totally drastically different data point that you, like, you want to use, but... Like I, dude, I I just I just don't like these damn short tracks. There's just, I think it's too independent on the off the speed that these guys have. Whereas other tracks are more predictable based on like how they've been running. Whereas here, like this is very much like some guys just like some weeks we're gonna have it, some weeks we're not gonna have it, some weeks we're gonna miss it, some weeks we're not gonna miss it and stuff. Like, when you look at Bat, Big Bad Brad, and my keyboard died. Hold on. All right, when we're looking at Big Bad Brad, like, this is one of the better packages, or at least last year, that Keselowski had consistently. Now, like, now, I mean, last week, you know, he Keselowski closes very well in, in Stage 3 in a lot of situations. They're very good at adjusting to the track, especially when they miss stuff. But, you know, like... 1.5s is a situation where he's typically a lot slower in practice and improves in the race, whereas at the short tracks they typically have pretty decent speed, especially like when you can when you compare this to like what his teammate Chris Busher was doing. Like Busher was quite actually horrible in terms of speed. It died again. No way. Oh brother, man. Hold on. Like where you look at where where Busher was. I mean, this is slowly. This is certainly you know getting better throughout the entire you know course of the short track season and stuff, but. Like man, there's still like, I'm just not I'm not a big fan of uh, of these of these short tracks and looking at previous data points and I think that's a situation to where I, I'm doing this for you guys, but I think I'm really just gonna throw out any old data and rely solely off of pit road and where these guys are in terms of off the truck speed to see like I mean we can just see right here as I go through these guys, you know. These people are all over the damn place, man. We've already looked at Busher. Um, like McDowell, if, like it, this is more so the lap lead. Like when we're looking at Phoenix, like the the primary lap leaders and the primary you know guys are going to get fast laps. Going to come from the positions one, two, and three. Like we understand that. Like so, like whoever starts one, two, and three, we want to try and chase. And then people who offer place differential and stuff. But like. So looking at this, I don't, I don't have a favorite, or I, I, I certainly have no clue who's gonna unload off the truck fast this weekend. You know, this is very much like let's, let's, uh, let's respond to what's given to us this, this week, and not really try and force it beforehand. I don't know. That's kind of my, that's kind of my approach. Because sometimes I've been, I think what I've done in the past is I've been too, uh, interested in people, and then I've just kind of, maybe had like tunnel vision. Or target fixation, and then kind of really screwed that up. Like we see JGR, we see that you know, I mean Hendrick did fall off slightly, but we see the JGR guys who pretty much had the most consistent runs uh, of maintaining a, a, a car that's going to be in the top fifteen. Whereas like Priest, who had phenomenal runs towards the end of the year, you know, had him at both Martinsville races, and I believe he started like first or second, or he started in the top five, and I believe for this one I could be wrong, but. Like, that, that's pretty good to see. Like, the two early races in the year, and then he was pretty much able to repeat that at the two later races in the year, Richmond and, and Phoenix. This is where it's concerning for me 
you know, like this would be data points that I would want to include and that would probably drag his stuff down, you know. So we're going to have we're going to have to see. I got to look into those races for him to see if there's any anomalies there. Ty Gibbs, I mean, I've already mentioned it, but like Bubba Wallace, Reddick and Ty Gibbs are going to are going to win people a shitload of money this year. It's probably it. To, we, I don't think we've got to worry about Ty Gibbs at the short tracks. We'll just worry about that uh, in the month of April when we go to Dover and Kansas. Uh, A.J. Arminger, when we're looking at that, that's more so for Wood Krause and um, Hamrick can have. Like we look, we look at how A.J. was doing and we look at what Haley was doing last year. Man, that is a rough and tough in one, man. We look at Dylan... My bad. Let's let's stop using one hand here. Like that's that's not as fun. That's not as it's not as good. We see that Stenhouse was running a bit better here, but Stenhouse would have really you know decent days, and then just horrific days. There there was no, I mean that's almost like everybody here, but like Stenhouse where he was like viable at the one point fives. You know like this is just not a situation where you where you can use him. Where if he's starting like sixteenth or something, that's like I don't think. I just don't, I just don't, the guys all over the damn place. With Spire Motorsports, we like the Spire stuff. Any old data we have on Spire, just throw that in the trash. That's a, that's a completely new uh, approach for that team. Like they, they have true speed. Like I don't think it's even viable looking at this type of stuff. Let's see what he has off the trailer. Um, we look at Eric Amarola, possibly what, you know, Gregson, can fall in line, you know, Barry, oh my God, short track guy, like, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. So now that we got that kind of done, let's, let's go ahead and then bring up the salaries for these fellas and then compare that here and see if there's any mispricing. I know I forgot where, When I was glancing over this earlier, uh, I believe that the only major guys that we're going to see be underpriced uh, is specifically Harrison Burton, Todd Gillen, which we need them to qualify poorly. Otherwise, it's just going to default to whoever offers the most place differential and who's the safer. But like Harrison Burton, Todd Gillen are underpriced compared to what they can do. We have, uh, I believe it's Wallace, possibly Suarez, Brad. I believe, and possibly Reddick, but let's get, I think Reddick is, I like, pretty sure the AK range is the piece that these guys are underperforming. And when we start comparing this based on salary, here's Larson. And I'm not trying to, you know, not say a lot, but, you know, I, I'm personally looking for a different approach this for the, for the short tracks this year. And so um, I'd rather just have everything out there uh, for you guys to see here in case this does help you in some form or fashion. Because I would probably primarily be focusing on the speed in the, uh, well, the weekend speed that these individuals are showing. We look at Blaney. We look at Byron. We look at Hamlin. We look at Bell. We look at Truex. Logano. Kyle Bush, we got Chastain, that's Cross, that's let's look at Ross. Move that up. Look at Elliot. You know, we look at Reddick. So Reddick's like the first guy that I'd be like, okay, that price and just probably works regardless of kind of where he's at. It'll determine it'll be determined on if he can lead any laps or whatever. Chris Busher, Brad. So like Brad is is technically kind of underpriced compared to where he's at we have Ty Gibbs, we have Briscoe, we have Wallace, we have Bowman, we got Suarez. I don't know. It's short tracks are always just it, it's completely hit or miss in Cup Series for me. I have like no faith in it. <laughs> In my ability at short tracks, it's insane. That's why, like, if you guys ever run into situations to where, like, you are not happy with your DFS play or something like that, like, you know, DFS is always a evolving thing. 
I think even if you're doing good, you have to change up your approach. But if you're doing bad, or you're not seeing results that you have wanted to see over whatever period of time you've determined to be that um, that timeline or that time frame. Do not be afraid to change it up. Like, what's gonna? What's the worst case situation? You do the exact same as you're doing before. Well, if you're not happy with that, like, you know, I think anything is better than that. You know, I wanna, I wanna have more sweats this year at short tracks and stuff. So once once we get to Gillen, we see that Gillen was way faster and, and a way better car than what his pricing is at. Um, that's kind of why I like looking at it in this terminology because, or in this way, because it not only shows where people were in terms of speed, it also shows them kind of where they fall in line with the current. I typically don't like doing salaried looks because then it's like, you know, oh my God, target fixation. Let's, let's play a lot of going and stuff. But like, you could clearly see that he was a much better car than where, than where pricing is, is putting and sliding them in here. You know, like that, that is, you know, a thing that, to note, but then like everybody sees that, you know, we have Hemrick, like I said, Hemrick, I think maybe not as good as AJ Allmendinger, but you look at him and Haley last year, that's kind of where Hemrick should fall in line. Burton, like I said, Burton's another guy technically based on this is, is underpriced. Haley's in the Rickware car. That's a completely unknown. We're going to have to see what happens with those guys. Kraus, Grala, like completely unknown guys here. Oh man, I mess that up. Let's fix this. Cause that's going to drive me insane. That's too dark. Uh, but anyway, so that, that's really my, my opening thoughts on, on this race. I want to primarily look at, uh, practice speed and, and pit road selection and, and probably be very aggressive in terms of that stuff. Probably more so than what I have been doing. Um, and that, that's really my, uh, my only real thoughts and approach for the cup series. I think so I'll see you guys in the Xfinity series video. I'll talk to you guys later.